How's everybody doing today? It's me, the Wombat! Yay! I am here with my Digitech RP7 Valve. This is a multi effects unit. I bought this used, I think I paid like 40 or 50 bucks. Brand new, they were like, they were like quite a bit back in the day. You can still find them on eBay, Reverb, and some other places for I think about one, one fifty, maybe two. This one's in really good shape. Uh, did, it came with the box, did not come with a manual. I looked up online, got some printouts. You have three different, four different things actually right here. You have your choice of different types of distortion modulation and pitch shifting which includes chorus flange tremolo whammy function stuff like that you have delays you have reverbs and then you have these things um, for going up and down through the channels and then what you'll do is you'll hit this it'll go it'll ask bank this thing will light up the display and then you have your choice of presets in here one two three four Here's your expression pedal. It's also volume pedal, wah pedal used for other stuff. Here's these knobs here for changing values when you actually get in and start doing the editing. I haven't done that. What I'm going to do today though is I've had this for a while. I don't think it was gigged. It was in pretty good shape so I don't think it was taken out much. But I do know that this is an older model that's been around for a while. So what I'm going to do is I am going to replace the tube, also known as a valve, with this new tungsten 12AX7. That's what this means here, valve. It's a fancy way of saying tube. People in England call tube amps valve amps. Or anything with tubes in it they call valves. And looks like the manufacturing date on this see if I can get it where I can show you guys. It's June of 98. It's a nice blue metallic finish. And there you can see the tube right there. See it hiding? Looks kind of dusty. Never opened this thing up before, so I imagine it's probably going to be dusty. With stuff like this, make sure you have a screwdriver that actually fits in here. Last thing you want to do is strip out any of your screws that just creates all kinds of problems down the road all kinds of problems uh, still has all its rubber feet which is a good sign that it wasn't abused it sounds pretty good I've used it on a couple of videos and I've seen other people say that you know anything that has tubes in it over time being turned off and on even if it was used in just a a bedroom type setting or if it's been you know just plugged in a few times and neglected sometimes the tubes can go bad just from lack of use and then from sitting so long and covered with dust they tend to get hot that's why when I showed it to you the back was vented as it was if you have a tube amplifier you'll notice that the back part of the amplifier is either open or it has a metal screen that's vented. Sometimes they actually put computer fans in amplifiers to help keep them cool. I've seen that done. Haven't seen any water cooled amplifiers. That'd be hmm, that'd be kind of interesting, I think. I don't know if that would work though or not, because the tubes are actually made out of glass. And I don't know what the the cooling element like in a water cooler would do being close to glass I that's an interesting thing I just thought of so anyways there are all the screws are out there's only eight pop this off like so as you can see there's nothing really to repair in there it's just one big circuit board but that's what we're after is that guy right there and it looks like looks like this just pulls out of the way 
Let's bend it out of the way. Wiggle the tube out like so. Easier said than done, right? Okay. This tube just pops right out. Should pop right out. Something real quick. Not really the best tool for the job, but in a pinch, a pair of pliers will work. Whenever you can, try to find the right size wrench. You'll be miles ahead of the game if you find the right size wrench to do stuff with. Actually, let's just do this. I think it's loose enough. Should just lift this thing here enough just to move it out of the way. There we go. Don't need to take it all out. Well, maybe we will. We'll just take it all the way out. It's easier that way. There we go. Okay, don't want to lose those parts. And it should be easier to get the tube out now. You don't want to put a lot of force on this or you'll break the circuit board that this is fastened to. There it goes. It's coming. It just takes a little while. And you just kind of want to wiggle it, put just a little pressure as you're pulling on it. Again, this is glass, so you don't want to break it. And then also... It'll be nice to have as a backup. Come on. It starts to go, and then it looks like I'm putting... There we go. Okay, and then you see... That's what the old tube looks like. Oh, this is a good tube. Okay, the brand is... Softec. Which I believe is owned by Electro Harmonics, if I'm not mistaken. It is a 12AX7W. Another distinguishing number on there, as you can see. I don't know how well it's going to show. There you go. It is a 7025. Sometimes tubes have different names. This one is made in Russia. Cool. But that's what it looks like. You can see the different parts of the tube. There's the pins that go into the socket, and you notice there's, right there, there's a pin missing, but they do that on purpose so you know where the alignment of the tube should be. And that's all nicely coated, and you have the two plates. It's pretty interesting how tubes work. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but it's pretty cool. If you ever seen a tube amp, or maybe if you guys remember old TVs where they had tubes, you'd start to see them glow, and you couldn't really do anything with your TV until these reached their optimum uh, operating temperature, and they'd glow a nice orange glow. So the tube I will be replacing it with today, like I said, is the Tung Sol. X7. Wow, this is made in Russia too. Okay, that's cool. Because so it should sound the same being a Russian tube. No, all tubes are exactly pretty much the same. You can see they look the innards look identical. A little bit more space in the middle of that one for heat dissipation I'm sure but anyways let, let's see the top has a little pin that hooks into this thing here got the little rubber grommet in there that'll hold it in place so it won't vibrate so plugging this in should be easier than the other way but let me show you this real quick okay now you see this the 
that brown thing right there with all the little silver dots that's the tube socket the tube goes in there and you see it has the little silver receivers all around except for that one spot where it's bare and where that bare spot is is where the spot on the tube that appeared to be missing a pin this spot right there you can see it let me show you a side see right there you can see it better so that spot right there is where it goes in the tube socket so it'd be nice if it was facing up then you could see it all nice and proud of the manufacturer but they installed it this way so we'll just put it back in this way and should just plug right in like so there we go oh yeah nice and nice and easy there this back on like so put the little little pointy part in the grommet hold that in place you don't have to wear gloves to do this but I just feel better <laughs> you know I'm, I'm used to like handling um, halogen light bulbs and stuff with gloves so I figure well extra precaution never hurts get that screw on take your time with it because the worst thing is you is to cross thread the thing that's when you get the thing on crooked and it feels like it starts to grip and then it just messes up and it's it's no fun for anybody after that Okay, and give it a little bit of a snuggling up with pliers, not too much. And I might have bent those out of the way, straighten those up. Now's a good time where if it looks like there's anything that might be out of place, something bent or any extra dirt you take care of that you know that's a 2303 battery wasn't planning on doing this but since we're in here why not all right I'll lift this guy up here try to get under it as best I can hopefully I won't break anything in the process of doing this okay actually I think by doing this I think I'm gonna reset it back to factory specs and what I did there is I took out the battery Let's see what that is CR 2032 it's just basic watch battery I think I have some of these right over here I did. Very common battery. Um, they use these a lot in computers, and this is like a computer for your guitar. So, open up the package. Put in a fresh battery to get the battery out of the package it is. There we go. Again, as you can see, it's the same number. CR2032. This is the Energizer versus the Sony one. It's three volts. And make sure you take these off. I've actually put these batteries in in a hurry. And, and wondered why something wasn't working. It's because I forgot to take the little paper tab that goes on there. You pull it off when you're ready to use it. And right now, we're ready to use it. So we just go ahead and put the battery. Oops, sorry. So 
So we put the battery right there like so. It's in there. Bend the tab back down. Okay, problem. It might be a problem there. I really hope it's not a problem, but there we go. Yeah, it's not going to stay in there like that. So when you do something like that, you can always put a piece of cardboard between the metal tab that holds it down and the thing itself. So we got that like that. And this is, I'm going to go and get the power supply and see if this will power up before I put the back on. So I'm going to stop the video here and then I'm going to start it again so you'll see what it looks like with the power on. Okay. Okay, I am back with the power supply and let me zoom in a little bit on this and kind of get right where that tube is so you can kind of see. What I'm talking about the tube and it will glow when it's energized. So I'm going to turn off this overhead light. And you'll see what I mean. Again, this has a certain way this goes. Smart, that's the top. go tube should start growing pretty soon here Get out of the way and while we're waiting for the tube to glow sometimes it takes a few minutes yeah, it's starting to get there. You can kind of see it a little bit. But like I was saying before, so you have these LED indicators that tell you what is being functioned. Your compressor, preamp, equalization, uh, noise gate, and it's trying to autofocus. Sorry about that. I'm shaking it noise gate, wah, pitch or modulation, delay, reverb, speaker cap simulator, and like I said before, you've got the distortion button, modulation, delay, reverb, and it has a bunch of extra features I haven't looked into yet, and you can see the display, it says this is U11, Sets a user assigned bank, channel one, and that's why this light is on number one is lit up. Let's do number two and I'll show you. Push number two. The LED shows that that's the bank that's being used and your read up there says it's number two. So how are we doing with our tube? 
it's glowing some. You can kind of see a little bit. Not a whole lot, but it is, it is glowing some. Let's see where the... Let's see if I can cover up the light a little bit. There you go, you can see a little bit of the glow. You can see a lot of the glow now. So, we know the tube is working, the tube's installed properly. And all I have to do is put the back panel on and away we'll go. So that's how you replace the tube and also the battery, which I wasn't really planning on replacing. But like I said, since I was already in here, why not, right? Sound like a good thing. So like I said, thank you for watching and hopefully this will help you be able to replace tubes in some of your um, tube preamp effects. Thank you.